My name is David Pamias. I'm a researcher at the uh, Department of Biomedical Science in the University of Lausanne. And uh, currently, I'm working in developing uh, in vitro methods uh, to substitute animal testing for neurotoxicology. As I mentioned, we, we work in, in alternatives to animal testing. So basically, when when chemicals go into the market, they need to do several tests to make sure that they are safe for humans. And uh, normally, this is done in animals. And um, what we are trying to develop is different uh, alternatives based in stem cells and human cells. So in the future, we could substitute the use of animals for testing all these compounds that go into the market. Well, I'm an animal lover, so I always uh, want to do something um, for for the, the the animals and the world. And and in the beginning, I want to do veterinary, but in the end, I move a little bit to another direction. So I think um, it's important to have safety for humans, but I think animals should not pay the price for for this. Uh, and I always wanted to do something to try to change that, so maybe we can do better science without the use of animals. In the scientific work, you always have a little bit of, you know, computer work and so some uh, experiments to do. So normally when I arrive to the lab, uh, I, I have for the day a few experiments to do. Uh, and then I try to combine this with the things that I, I need to write. For example, you have to write grants or you have to write a paper or some reports. So you can, you know, combine a little bit. So you do, you prepare experiments. So you do some experiments with cells. Then in the meantime, there's an incubation for some regions. You can work a little bit in the computer. Uh, and then you go back to do another experiment. So you, or you also need to analyze the data. So it's a little bit of combination between um, working in experiments in the lab or, or to do some, some work in the computer. So it's kind of nice because you, you can uh, also organize yourself. So I want to do this in the morning and then after lunch I will do this. Uh, so more or less that's how a normal day looked like. How I started this career, it is um, it was a little bit by by chance. Uh, I always wanted to do something with with animals, and uh, I wanted to do veterinary. But the 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 bachelor degree was not in my city, and my family couldn't pay me to go to another place. So I tried to find something in in my city that was fitting for for you know kind of animal protection stuff like that. So I did environmental science. And then during the career, I, I figured out that I really like to do things in the lab and the lab was what I wanted to do. So I slowly I took uh, the, the subjects that I like more related with lab. And then in my last year, I did um, some work in a lab that were working with the stem cells. And for, by, by chance, the, the PI that they were not working in toxicology decided to, to start with a project in toxicology. Uh, but that was by chance. And then after that, someone from another department that was in toxicology was uh, really interested in my work. So then I moved in toxicology and then slowly uh, I, I went into more deep in toxicology. And so I did a PhD uh, on toxicology. I did a master in bioengineering uh, that also was under the toxicology um, um, field in the in the university. And then from there I did my postdoc and everything I did afterwards was related with um, toxicology in vitro. I did a few courses related with the stem cells so, so to try to improve myself in these uh, cells because it's what uh, the field is moving towards to use more stem cells. From the beginning, I kind of was directed a little bit and then I just continue in that direction. I, I really like it. I think it's really cool. I think for, for science, uh, the most important thing uh, is to never give up uh, because um, this is normal that, you know, when you start experiments, sometimes that they don't work. Uh, sometimes you ask for grants and you don't get the grants because it's really competitive. So I think the most important thing is you, you are constant and, and try to move forward, even if, you know, you have many uh, barriers or, or in front of you, but you keep trying, keep trying, keep trying. So I think you have to try to have a, 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 a strong, a strong um, 
drive to to move forward uh, i think that's the most important skill so i think also it's important to um, have a good social skills because you are going to have to collaborate with many people or work in a group with several people and because we are looking now in science for more uh, teamwork it's important that you are able to work with different people also i think uh, social skills will help you when you have to sell yourself unfortunately in science to to be able to get publications or funding, you, you have to try to kind of sell yourself. So I think it's important that you are able to, you know, uh, show your work in a nice way so people, you know, can get uh, as excited as you are in the work that you are doing. If you have a toxicology background uh, as mine, you can work in, in academia, uh, you can be a teacher or a professor and you can teach uh, uh, toxicology, for example, or other um, subjects related with your, with your background. You can also do research in academia, as I'm doing. Um, there is also the possibility to work in industry because uh, many companies, especially pharma pharmaceuticals or, or chemical industry, need toxicologists also because in the end they want to put the chemicals in the market, right? So they have to do the toxicology assessment. So I think you can also work in, in, in well, I know for sure you can work also in, in industry. And actually many people, when they finish toxicology, they move into industry. Um, there's also the, the possibility to work in, in regulatory agencies. Uh, for example, uh, there is some um, um, governmental institutions like EFSA or ECBAM or things like that, where they also do the risk assessment of the compounds. So they need experts to, when they receive the dossiers from the chemical industry or the pharmaceuticals to, to make sure that they, everything is safe and the compound can go into to the market. Uh, so there's also this possibility. And I saw there's some people that have moved into editorial work, uh, like for example, uh, a journal, the scientific journal. So they are working more in the editorial of these scientific communications. So I think the good thing of toxicology is you always uh, not only can do things related with science, but also you can work more into regulatory because uh, obviously they need toxicologists for regulate all these compounds. The main challenges in science, uh, unfortunately, is to get money to do the, what you want to do. So I think uh, it's a really competitive. Uh, there are many people uh, doing science and many good, good scientists. Uh, so and the funding is um, depends the country, but sometimes it's not uh, super great. So you have to kind of um, fight and uh, use a lot of time and try to write in grants uh, to get your money, uh, to get money enough to do the science that you want to do. And I think that's a, the big um, limitation for, for what scientists are facing every day. I think students should uh, um, follow their hearts and, and try to find something that really like. Um, if, if they really like, uh, you know, laboratory and try to do something for animals and, you know, uh, try to discover new ways to assess uh, compounds and, and save some animals. I think toxicology is what they look for. But I think it's important that they like what they want to do, because in the end, you are going to spend uh, a huge percentage of your life working, right? So if, if you are happy with your job, that will be the ideal situation. It will be really nice uh, and uh, in, my, in my opinion important to approach the uh, students, uh, young minds into um, into science when early on. So uh, I think um, they could get excited. I think science is a really exciting field and, and if they start, you know, approaching the kids to different activities relating with science, I think they will they will really like it. And also I think it's important even if they don't go into a scientific career that they have knowledge in in science and, and you know they know a little bit how it works and also for example ethical concerns related with the three r's is important to that they can understand early on so in the future they will be able to you know uh, take a position into uh, the ethical debate about this. But I think there's some activities like uh, there's open days in the universities. There are some like um, scientific 
labs and things like that, that, you know, the kids can start uh, looking into science and see if they really like it or not for their future careers. The three R's are really important and, and, and we, sh we need people to work on that. Uh, I think we, it, it, it is clear that, you know, uh, we put always human as a first uh, because we are humans, right? So we want to be, uh, you know, get the best science, get the more safety products and stuff like that. But I think uh, animals don't deserve to be, you know, our our test um, animals for all this. And I, actually, they have shown to be, you know, a really good model. So uh, in the end, we are trying to make a way to make better uh, science. So I think it's important to have people that dr are a driving force into move this into more human human science instead of mice science. Because if we think about it, the most things that we know is about mice, uh, and and we should know more about humans and less about mice, right? If we are so interested in humans, so I think to have human models and stuff like that, and and substitute these animal studies for human studies. So for, uh, you know, I mean, when I say human studies, I mean with cells that are humans and, and models that are humans. Uh, I think that will uh, improve the science, but also to reduce the the amount of uh, animals that we are killing every, every year.